Welcome to the Fantasy Zone, motherfucker. That's right, Space Harrier. An interesting game that I remember seeing in the arcade, and I think I played it a few times back in my real early teenage years. Space Harrier was developed and published by Sega. It was originally released in 1985 in the arcade, and it has been ported to many home consoles, some handhelds, and even a variety of computers. It can be found on the Amiga, Amstrad CPC, Atari ST, Commodore 64, MS-DOS, FM7, Sega Game Gear, Famicom Disk System, PC-6001, PC-88, Sega 32X, Sharp X1, Sega Master System, Sharp X68000, Sega Saturn, TurboGrafx-16, and the ZX Spectrum. In this review, I'm going to mainly focus on the arcade version, but I will talk about the Sega Master System port as well, since it was the first time it was released on home consoles. Now, Space Harrier is a fast-paced rail shooter that is in the behind view or third-person perspective. It, technically, it's a 3D game, and it's set in a world of bright colors, crazy landscapes, and a checkerboard-style ground, with stone pillars, trees, and more. Funny enough, this game was supposed to be a realistic military-themed game, similar to Afterburn, but Yu Suzuki redesigned it to fit a fantasy setting. Some have said that it's related to the Fantasy Zone games, because it's apparently set in the same world, which it does kind of have the same bright colors, weird enemies, and whatnot. Except this game has a lot more detail to it, I think. Now you play as Harrier, and you must navigate through 18 stages with a laser cannon and a jetpack, flying around blasting enemies away and bosses. Of course, these enemies range from a nice variety of creatures. There are prehistoric animals, Chinese dragons, flying robots, airborne objects, alien pods, and more. 15 of the 18 stages have a boss at the end, that must be wiped out to move on to the next stage. The final stage is a rush of the past seven bosses you encounter, and there's two other levels that are bonuses, and you must smash through the landscape obstacles to collect points. Really, there is no storyline to this game. You just go through, kick ass, and the game ends. Which is kind of odd because you think there would be some sort of backstory here. Apparently, though, in the console versions, there is a little bit of a backstory, which is pretty cool. The graphics for Space Harrier in the arcade are pretty damn good for its time. First of all, like I said earlier, the game is in a somewhat 3D view, and that's awesome. It looks great, the animations are very well done, especially when you have a ton of shit coming at you. The game is very colorful, the design of the sprites are great, although the farther you go, you definitely see a repeat of the same sprite but a color swap which isn't necessarily a bad thing the game is fast paced and doesn't slow down or glitch nothing to really complain about here and for its time this game looks fucking great the music is well composed i really like it a lot it's a bit on the light-hearted happy side which is always great each level theme has its own music but you do see multiple versions of the same level design just with color changes and all of that so you will hear the same music over again but it is well composed enough and it's not sloppy that i'm perfectly fine with that the sound effects are good too from the shooting noise the enemies, explosions, and so on. As for the little bit of voiceover work, I really like it. I think it sounds great, and it's clear. Not some muffled garbage. The controls are very simple. You move around, shoot, and they respond very well. And of course, if you look at the cabinets, they had a sit-down and stand-up one that there was a joystick on the front with a button on top to shoot. Playing this on main with a PlayStation 3 controller, I think it responds quite well. Granted, it's not the exact same thing, but it's pretty damn close. Space Harrier is a badass arcade game. I enjoy playing it and spent quite a bit of time playing the damn thing while working on this review. The gameplay is simple to understand. It's fun. The graphics are great, although I wish there was some different level designs and enemies after a while. But still, the game is colorful, doesn't slow down, glitch, or anything like that. The music is great. The sound effects and voiceover work are very well done. And the controls are pretty damn good. Not a lot of flaws, to be honest with you. It's fun to play, and that's all it needs to be. For a game that is released in 1985, I think personally it's a bit advanced for its time. And that's fucking awesome. Now let's talk about the Sega Master System port of Space Harrier, which was also developed and published by Sega, and it was released a year later in 1986, and in some places, 1987. The game is pretty much the same, so other than there's a little bit of a backstory, but I'm not going to go through that, and there's a few slight changes here and there, but it doesn't affect the game overall, and doesn't really change anything that is important about the game. It stays pretty much the same. So I'm going to focus on the graphics, music, sound effects, and of course the controls. As you can see, the Sega Master System port is is very heavy on limitations, and there's nothing wrong with that. Now, of course, this is an 8-bit console. Personally, I think the game is a little bit much for the console, which is funny because an 8-bit game like this worked very well later on with 3D Battles of World Runner on the NES. The sprites do look nice, and it is colorful, and all 18 stages are here, but the backdrops that were in the arcade version are not there, and obviously, the game runs a lot slower. 
and it also seems like it flickers a lot. Is this horrible? No, but it could be a lot better than this. The music is actually enjoyable, even if it's an 8-bit version of the arcade music. I like it. Granted, it's not the best 8-bit music I've ever heard, but it sounds great. The sound effects are not half bad, and the voiceover work? Well, I think this game could have done without. You can understand what is said, but it just doesn't need to be here. The controls? are okay. Moving around is easy to do. Shooting is easy. Obviously, this time you're using a D-pad instead of a joystick. But yeah, the game is playable. Maybe a little bit slow at responding, but it's only a little bit. Could be a lot worse than this. Overall, the Sega Master System port of Space Harrier is okay. The gameplay is obviously the same for the most part. The graphics are not bad, but could have been better, I think, even for the Sega Master System. I think there's a bit too much going on for it, and with the limitations, it really runs a bit rough. The music is great, the sound effects are nice, and the controls are not bad. Personally, I have no problem playing this, and I'm sure a lot of people in the mid to late 80s that enjoyed the arcade version had no problem playing this back then. Granted, it does look a little rough, but it's not unplayable. If you want to pick up Space Harrier, there's a few ways you can. The arcade version can be found on MAME, a badass arcade emulator. Finding a cabinet might be a bit tough, so just get it on MAME. When it comes to the Sega Master System port, it's 25% rare. Prices on eBay range from $550, $15, $776, $19 for a complete in-box, and prices in between. The complete in-box versions that are out there are ranging from $15 to about $24, $25. And that's pretty good. If you have a Nintendo 3DS, it was released on the Nintendo eShop in 2012 in Japan and everywhere else in 2013. When it comes to sequels, there's Space Harrier 2, Space Harrier 3D on the Sega Master System, Space Harrier on the Sega Saturn, Planet Harrier, and a 3D remake on the PlayStation 2 that is part of the Sega Ages 2500 series. And then there's a compilation on the PlayStation 2 that features almost the whole series, which is also part of the Sega Ages 2500 series. Now, there's actually a crossover game between Fantasy Zone and Space Harrier. And it was developed in 1991 by NEC Avenue. It features Opa Opa from Fantasy Zone, has nine levels, and combines gameplay elements from both franchises. There's actually a bootlegged version out there, and there's ISOs of it out there that you can download for your, your TurboGrafx CD or PC Engine CD emulator. At a later time, I will definitely have to talk about that game and check it out. I hope you enjoyed this review of Space Harrier on the arcade and Sega Master System. Thanks for watching.